Hey, what's going on? My name is Vic. In this video, me and you are going to make a social media overlay. In fact, me and you are going to make a bunch of social media overlays. I'm going to show you how you can customize them and do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So all you need to do is follow along. Let, let, let's go. First step up is After Effects. So when we open After Effects, this is probably what you're going to be seeing. And don't worry if your After Effects looks slightly different to mine, but always ensure, if you're doing this for the start, stick on the standard profile, the standard workspace. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's select new composition. So what we want, 1920 by 1080, kind of a standard full HD screen. We're going to go with 30 frames per second and we're kind of good to go. So let's press OK. So now we've got our composition. We want to bring in those social media overlays. So first off, I'm going to right click here in this box or we can go file and import. And now let's bring in our logos. For this example, we're going to use Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, but you can bring in whatever logos you want. Now I'm going to drag these onto our composition here and we can see, whoa, that's too big. So what we want to do is we want to scale these down and I'm going to turn off the eyes here so we don't see all of them. So we're only going to see the Facebook one. So I'm going to press S on the keyboard and then I'm going to bring this down to like, I don't know, 15. That's eh, kind of a little bit big, right? So let's bring it down to 10. And what we want is we want all of these to be kind of roughly the same size and you'll see why in a minute. So let's bring in the Instagram one. As we can see, that's a bit big. So because all of these logos are different sizes, the scales aren't going to work the exact same way. So you got to kind of eyeball it. As we can see, if I bring this down to 10%, it's, yeah, too small. So let's bring it up to maybe 15. Okay, and then the final one here, let's look at the Twitter one, which is just a little bit too big. So I'm going to press S on the keyboard and make sure you've highlighted which layer that you want to work with. And I'm going to bring this down to like 75. Let's bring it down to 72. Let's bring it down to 68. And we got to get it right. So eyeball it. So that's kind of in and around where we want to be. They're all scaled to the right size. Now we want to position them. So this is going to be a multiple social media overlay because I know a lot of people have different kind of handles for different social medias. And this is how we're going to present these on screen. We're going to stack them. So what we want to do is we're going to select all three here first by keeping shift pressed. And we're going to press P on the keyboard and then we're going to drag them all over here to the side of the screen. Now I'm going to click out here and we're going to start positioning them whatever way we want. So in this case, I'm going to bring Instagram down here. I'm going to turn on the Facebook logo because we missed that. And I'm going to bring that down here. And now we can see oh, that Facebook logo is still a little bit big. So let's press S again and let's jump back and let's give it a scale of eight. So now we've got all of these at the side and they're kind of more or less ready to rock. So you could drop this into your video. But we want to make these kind of nice and cool and funky, right? So what we need to do is we're going to animate the scales. So on this one here, I'm going to press the stopwatch icon and we can see here we've got a little keyframe. So I'm going to drag that out. Now I'm going to press zero at the start of the timeline and we can see Oh, okay. Here comes our Facebook logo really slow. If we want to speed this up, the distance between the keyframes is what makes it faster or slower. So there we go. And that's like, Vic, that's really too slow. So you can zoom in on the timeline here by pressing the plus and minus on the keyboard. Let's bring them closer. Boom. Okay. Looks good, right? Let's change this up another notch. Now, Motion graph editor sounds really complicated. It's not. This is how you can make these logos snap and pop and do all kinds of cool things. Highlight your two keyframes. This little icon here, the graph editor, select that. Now we've got a kind of a, a different view. It's like, what the hell is this? Now what we want to do is fit the selection to view so we can get a better look at it. And what we want to do is bring this up beyond the scale it needs to be. So let's zoom out here again. And now if we go back here and play, we can see that pop. See the little pop that's going on? A nice pop at the end just gives it so much sheen and polish and your stuff is going to look banging. The tighter the curve here, the faster that pop is going to be and the less kind of smooth it is or we can make it super smooth like that. So there's lots of ways that you can play around with the motion graph editor like that. And essentially, we're going to do the exact same thing for the Twitter logo and the Instagram logo. And then we're going to get into putting your handle in. All right, anyway, you're going to be like blowing everybody away. And this is so simple to do, right? If you are getting stuck, by the way, 
drop me a comment below by the way my name is Vic how's it going uh, we do all things creative video here so for all things filmmaking video techniques tips and thoughts consider hitting subscribe right back to this all of that looks really really cool what do we want to do here there's lots of different options that we can do okay so let's say we want to start with the Twitter logo that comes on first maybe then the Instagram logo and then the Facebook logo so just for my own sanity and it's good best practice I'm going to put the Twitter logo at the top by dragging it and then I'm going to put the Instagram logo and I'm going to put the Facebook logo so it's kind of easy for you to follow visually I'm going to highlight all of these by pressing Control and A then I'm going to press U so we kind of hide all of the keyframes so now what we want to do is stagger this. So we want the kind of the Instagram logo not to pop at the same time as the Twitter logo. And we want the Facebook logo to pop a little bit after the Instagram logo comes on, right? So let's look at it like this. So they all come up nice and smooth. And if you want to make this a little bit fancier, we can add some opacity so they kind of fade in. But I think that when they're popping like this, you don't need to add the opacity. So let's get in all of our handles here. You might have different handles for Instagram and Facebook as we said at the start. So let's right click here. Let's go new, let's go text. I'm gonna make it all capitals. And we can get our font option here. So I use the Montserrat font all the time so you can use different weights, simply highlight the text and you can change it to medium, semi-bold or bold. So bold looks pretty good next to that, right? All right, let's, let's keep it bold. Vic, that's cool, but like it's nowhere near the Twitter logo. It doesn't make any sense. So let's press P on our keyboard. We can press V here as well and we can just drag it around or we can just kind of move everything back and forth by fiddling about with the X and the Y axis. So let's get this here. And now, how does that look, right? Could we make it a little bit bigger? Maybe we could. So we can just drag up our text size here a little bit more. Let's bring it up to 115. Click on the text and we can move it out here. And now because I've got a different handle for Instagram, I got a drop the different text. So again, right click, new text, you could do it that way. Alternatively, we could copy the current text that's there. So we've got all the exact same settings and font. And all you gotta do is press Control and D. So we gotta press P and we gotta bring this Let's down. Do so Control and kind of in to line. paste it in. And then if we wanna change this text, we just double click on the layer, type in Vic Barry, which is my Instagram handle. We can see the position is a little bit off. I don't want to confuse people with paragraphs. So the easiest thing to do is just move it across. And then Facebook, again, Control and D. Let's bring this down. Double click on it here. And I'm going to go this one, Victor Barry. And let's move over our position just a little so we're all looking rosy in the garden. Sometimes that'll pop up in After Effects, by the way, until you press Caps Lock and it's pressed. Just press it and you're good to go. So there we have our epic social media overlays. But, but, you're like, Vic, what? What's going on? Look, look at this. Doesn't make any sense. So we want to stagger everything correctly. So this one here needs to come on with the Twitter one. The Vic Barry one here needs to come on with the Instagram one, and then the other one needs to come on with the Facebook one so we can see, you're like, okay, that kind of works, but why is that here? So this is where we look into the opacity or we can do different wipes, all right? So there's a couple of different ways we can do this here. So we're gonna do one wipe maybe, and then we're gonna type it out in an animation. Hopefully everybody's following along in this. It's super easy to do. All you gotta do is just get in and then just like, punching keyboards and stuff, right? Twitter one here, I'm gonna do uh, an opacity fade. So all I gotta do is press T on the keyboard and we've gotta go back to the start here and where the logo needs to come in, we need to click or stopwatch icon. So that's gonna be at 100%. Then we're gonna press zero and we can see how it fades in. And if we stretch this out a little bit, the fade is gonna be that bit more. And then what we can do is copy this opacity here by highlighting the two keyframes, Control and C, and then let's go for the Facebook one down here. And we gotta make sure that we're on the Facebook text. And then wherever you want the opacity to happen, then we can see that's fading in. All right, so low, let's type out the Instagram one really quickly. So there's a really good effect in After Effects, it's called typewriter. Out of the box, it's a bit slow, but with a couple of clicks, you can make it super fast. Let's go to this one here, and I'm gonna go to effects. So if you don't see effects, like I don't see here, all you gotta do is select window, select effects and presets, get in here and type typewriter. And then all you gotta do is 
drag and drop it on to whatever piece of text that you want to animate. And you go, okay, Vic, that's easy. And then you're like, uh, it's kind of slow, screwed up. So what do we do here? Well, we got to get in, we got to open the hood, and we got to fine tune it. So I'm going to press U, and U is going to show us kind of everything that is going on in this particular layer. Anything that's been animated, it's going to show us the keyframes. So if you were listening earlier on, you will know that if we put the keyframes closer together, they're going to be faster. Let's put these keyframes together because we pressed U. So this is a range selector. So now we can see, ah, it's starting to type a lot faster, which is great. Things are looking good, but we need to kind of tie this in a little bit better. So let's move these keyframes a little bit back here. So we have our Twitter handle, then our Instagram. So we want the Facebook text to appear last because it looks good. Kind of, it's kind of staggered down, down, down. So we can make this a little bit faster by again, positioning the keyframes. So if we look, there we go. So Twitter name, Instagram name, Facebook name, all pop, 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 pop. Now, if we want to take this up to another level, I'm going to show you something that's really cool and it's going to make life a little even bit easier and give you so much more flexibility. And we're going to do this by grouping these together in a little pre-composition. That's After Effects terminology. If you're a Premiere user, think it's kind of like nesting, but it's going to make life easier. So I'm going to select the Facebook logo and the Facebook handle text by keeping control and the keyboard pressed. I'm going to right click. I'm going to select pre-compose and I'm just going to call this Facebook. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to do the exact same thing here for everything else. And I'm going to group the Instagram logo with the Instagram handle text. I'm going to pre-compose. I'm going to call this Insta, press OK. And then finally the Twitter handle and logo pre-compose, call it Twitter. So what this means basically is we have complete control of these independently. We can move them wherever we want. We don't have to move the text and then move the logo. For example, let's say I'll select the Insta one here. I'm going to press P in the keyboard and it's all going to move independently. So you can do whatever you want with these. So you're saying, Vic, these are really cool. Maybe they're a little bit big. So I guess I made them a little bit big for the screen capture. You could see what's going on. But when we have pre-composed them or grouped them together, it makes it super easy for these to scale. So remember the scale command in After Effects, press S. And now we can scale these to wherever we want. Keep in mind, the scale is a little bit weird. It's kind of going into the center. So if you see this little dot here, I'm going to turn off the Twitter here to see it. This here is the anchor point, all right? That's the anchor point, and the scale is always going to work off of that. So if you want to change the anchor point, we select this option up here, pan behind, or you can press Y on the keyboard, and then we can drag our anchor point wherever we want. And then if we look at the scale, it's scaling from the Instagram logo. So I'm going to drop the scale on these down to like 25, maybe. That's probably a bit too much, Vic. Let's go with 40. Facebook, I'm going to scale that down to 40 as well. But as we can see, we don't have to change the anchor point, but we can always kind of do it when we need to. It's always good practice to change the anchor point if you're scaling stuff, always is. And then finally, let's turn back on our Twitter. Let's change our anchor point so the scale happens from the Tweety Bird. Press S. Let's bring this down to 40. And now we can position these however we want. So I'm going to press P in the keyboard. I'm going to press V so we can move. I'm going to drag this around. Now I'm going to do the Facebook one. Press P in the keyboard. Drag it around. Same with the Instagram one. Press P in the keyboard. And there we go. So we can position these however we want. You can line them up with the up and down arrows. Press shift to kind of bring them across a block of pixels at a time. Same with the Insta logo here. So I'm just going to position this really easily. And then I'm just going to shift and right click. And then if we play it back, there's one problem here and it's my OCD kicking in. The Instagram logo is kind of coming in last, but it's starting second. So you can change the order of these around very, very easily. And that's just by moving the order. Simple as. So we move the Insta one over a little bit. So we got the Twitter, we got the Facebook and the Instagram. And you can change the spacing and the staggering of these to whatever you like. The final step here is super important, and this is how you render it out, because we want this to go on top of our video, just like this, as opposed to kind of having a big black screen underneath our social media overlay like this. So to render this out, all we gotta do is select File, let's select Export, 
Now let's select add to render queue. On our render settings, it should look exactly like this. Let's select OK. On our output module, and this is where it's really important. If we have RGB selected here, it's going to render everything as is. However, if we have RGB and alpha, it's going to forget about the black screen that we're seeing. And this means basically you're going to have a transparent background for your social media overlay to go over whatever you want. I'm not going to have any audio here in this because there is no audio. But if you had audio in your social media overlay, you'd make sure this was auto or on. I'm just going to select this to off. I'm going to select OK, and now I'm going to select Render. How cool does that look? Your very own social media overlay. Now I get it if you're new to After Effects, you're like, my head is going to explode, Vic. That's cool too, right? My head explodes with After Effects on a regular basis. But pause the video, go back, check out what you got stuck on, take a breather, maybe walk away and come back, clear your head, because it can like melt the mind. Now, if you're going, that's all cool, Vic, but maybe can I just get this as a template and you can customize it yourself? I got you on that one as well. I have made this as a template. It's downloadable via Selfie. The link is in the description. And there's some extra animation options in here as well to make this thing look even better than it already does. You know how to customize it and we're all good. So if you want to support me directly and the channel, thank you very much. Link is in the description. And also, if you found this video useful and informative, please consider hitting subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. And until then, don't stop fighting for yourself.